So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk. So we're gonna do. All right. So yeah, but basically with Labrys and so just briefly with with those two. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll, we'll we, I guess we will. I guess we'll. You know, let's talk about let's talk about I guess a little bit. Okay. I guess um, is basically a robot that says I can't die. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't have it, and I know you have the, uh, the death drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and I feel, and I feel like, um, and in and in the, we're gonna talk about the answer, and, and I think honestly, the way in which that the can encapsulate how the neuro, how neuroscience, how how neuroscience has taken over our lives, and how that can sort of be taken away, and sort of be helped, is is what happens with Igis. So she, so after the death of her best, of of, of the protagonist of Persona Three, she she stops she stops dreaming. She stops dreaming. And what re was realized is that Metis, this this figure that is allegedly her sister, is actually the part of her that was human. And so and so when they reach so and because armor, she starts more militaristic mm -hmm. and more militaristic. So that sort of that reintegration of the heart and the soul into this robot is sort of exactly what is needed to help against the neuromatic. Do you, would you agree with that, so that, 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 that image? Well, I mean, it's a beautiful image, right? I mean, it sort of speaks to perhaps the restoration of something that has been lost or left behind, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, something about the, the human that gets sort of reintegrated, right? And so, yeah, because I mean, like that, you talk about the death drive. The death drive is a kind of, um, you know, I think about it, I don't, I mean, you know, Freud and Young are very different in mm. so many ways, but not in some ways too. Uh, and, and, and thinking a lot about the the way in which you know Freud was more much more, you know, like the death drive is like a really like that's a compulsion that we perhaps all have, right? The idea, which is born of a kind of crazy sort of um, ego-driven kind of trip in which you know when you die. Uh, is a kind of weird way to live in the world and, and there's a kind of way in which that that sort of uh, proclivity I think speaks to again going back to the, the, the kinds of freedoms that are promised and generated within us these days I think is not unrelated uh, to that drive hence the shadow Facebook and that's why shadow Facebook would be so good because we need to rehistorize. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening with these new, with the, with the, with the, with, with the whole. I, this is what I will talk about. You know what? We will talk about with Sophia. Mm -hmm. Is that Sophia's persona? Final. So it's the box. I forget the name of the Greek word for it, but it's a box. It's the box. It, it is Pandora's box. Pandora's box. And, and and when it opens to become Pandora. Um, is that is that she's repressed? We talked. We and we did end this basically with the AR discussion. But so, of when Pandora's all evil comes out, but there's a little bit of hope left. And I think with the that Jung's neuro uh, Jungian neuropsychoanalysis, that we, it seems like we will not have the time to really talk about it right now. But the idea of rehistorizing, reconnecting, reorganizing psychology mm -hmm. with the knowledge and and not making people fail to accept. To allow for the hope in our lives, that is that is what is needed. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Like this, I, this image of the of Pandora and the hope. Yeah, I think that's absolutely. You know, we talked about that today, and I think there's, you know, you have to have a certain degree of hope and happiness as you approach even the darkest of situations, mm -hmm. because there's going to be, you know, I mean, and, it, and it, so it's not instrumental. It doesn't mean that we're hopeful, or that, that means it's going to work out. We have to be open and accepting of the fact that even our best actions will not necessarily solve the problem, but yet we, we try to solve the problem anyway, right? And so the idea of, you know, going back to this notion that there's a lot of um, things happening right now that are unfortunate that can, I sense, be related to the sort of technological conditions of possibility that are in place right now, but I also think, as you articulate quite well, that there's something... There's something um, quite powerful and, 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 and revolutionary um, about our understandings of ourselves, our understandings of reality, our, 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 you know, these discussions that we've been having for thousands of years. You know, we're living in this moment where, you know, we can experience the world in different ways than those who came before us because of the machines that we have. And despite the fact that those machines are being abused and used against us in many ways, 
Um, that's not all they are, right? And that's not all who we are. And so there is there is possibilities of, as you say, as you're interested in this kind of reorganization of the neuromatic, right? This idea that, okay, this is wonderful. We know about mathematical theories of communication. We know about neural networks. We know, you know, a lot more about the brain than we did 100 years ago. But um, there's also a way to sort of use that knowledge and use that insight in a non-reductive, perhaps, way.